It's wonderful good to have good you Good morning. With I feel us. like good we have morning. To, this is good. Do we say namaste or no? Namaste is good. Okay. Namaste. Essentially, this is a way of, uh, you know, when you look at a person, you tend to recognize their gender, their caste, creed, color, or good, bad, all kinds of things. To look beyond that, that fundamentally the source of every life is the same thing. So when we do namaste, we recognize only that dimension of you. Mm. You as a possibility, not as what you are today. So we're talking about like kind of re-engineering ourselves. I don't know if you notice, but New Yorkers tend to be a little high strung. <laughs> <laughs> How can you miss it? <laughs> you notice. <laughs> so what do we need to do to kind of reset ourselves, re-engineer? Well, it's in engineering. See, we have engineered the outside world the way we want. But what have we done about ourselves? As a generation of people, we are living in the highest level of comfort and convenience, but <laughs> we are whining like nobody else. <laughs> so we're not finding that inner peace, the, the See, true these, happiness, success. These, these words have become very cliched, inner peace, inner joy. But tell me, all human experience, joy or misery, where does it happen? It can heart. only happen within us. Right. It never happens in the air, okay? People say love is in the air, but it's not true. When you are in love, it looks like everything is like that. When you are in joy, it looks like the whole world is joyful. So fundamentally, all human experience comes from within us. What happens around us, there are too many forces. We can't control all of it. Right. Some of it happens our way. But what happens from within us must happen our way. Right now, this is the only problem human beings have. What happens within us is not happening our way. Because we are not engineered the way we want. Good engineering simply means it works the way we want, isn't it? So how can you achieve that? There is a scientific process, as there is a science and technology for external well-being. Similarly, there is an entire science and technology for inner well-being. See, do you agree with me that this human mechanism is the most complex or sophisticated machine on the planet? But have you read the user's manual? <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. So, by the way, you do online courses, right? Yes, there is online inner engineering process, which is uh, more of a preparatory step. And then there's a completion process, which is always direct transmission. So, you're very me socially savvy, you know? I mean, you have two, almost two million followers uh, on Twitter. I mean, uh, there are over 500 million people uh, on our YouTube uh, imprints are there. Wow. That's yes. incredible. But... Uh, you know, when you say savvy, I've been living in this world uh, for over six decades, so I know this world, the way it works. <laughs> and what about also the uh, Isha Foundation that you have? Because people can visit there, spend several days. Yes, uh, we have uh, two large centers. We have city centers, over 350 centers across the world. Mm -hmm. But we have two major centers, one in southern India and one in Tennessee, near Chattanooga. Okay. So this is over a over 2,300-acre uh, property, which is a large meditation center. In India, it's over 500-acre property, which is uh, one of the most important places. It's on Incredible India platform right now as a tourism place also. And I know that you're also in town because you're, I guess, a fashionista. I don't know. Are you? Well, <laughs> am I doing okay? You look great. <laughs> you got every, you're styling from the top down to your toes. So you're doing something of fashion meets peace? So or? this is, uh, this is a 150th uh, birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. So this year we are doing many things, whatever was dear to him. One thing was rural life, so we are doing a lot of work with the farmers and creating model villages. Mm -hmm. Another thing is uh, the clothing because one symbol of Mahatma Gandhi was always spinning wheel and him because this was a protest against mm. the destruction of textile industry in India by the occupying forces of the time. So we are trying to put this back because India has over 136 distinct varieties of weaves. No other culture has ever done this. Hmm. It's taken few millennia to develop these skills. But today, most of them are on the verge of dying because it's a almost the last generation doing this weaving. Their children have all become software engineers probably right. in San Francisco. True. <laughs> That's very funny. That's right. So we're trying to put this back 
To put this back, one of the most important thing is to create a market. So we are exposing these textiles. We brought 120 varieties of distinct weaves to be presented to some of the top uh, American designers so that uh, they get familiar with this uh, weaves Process, yeah. and also how to use it. It's their choice. Oh, that's so nice. So if somebody's watching right now, can we do something to make them feel better? Is there something that we, like a thought that we can kind of like think, you know, get our minds around today to kind of reset our day? The simple thing is just this. See, what people are struggling with is not their life. People think they're suffering their life. No, they're suffering their own thought and emotion most of the time. Either their body or their thought or emotion. Right. Most of the time, unless they uh, have an injury or an ailment, it may be physical body. But rest of the time, it's just their own thought and emotion. What I'm asking you is, when will you learn to handle your thought and emotion? At what time in your life? Because even if you're fifty, sixty, if you've not figured how to handle your thought and emotion, when are you going to get it? Maybe you never do. <laughs> so if you never do, what you're saying is, the basic faculties that you have, which is unique to the human being, this level of cerebral activity is unique to the human being on this planet at least. So, your most fundamental instruments, which is what makes us human, you will never get to use it the way you want it. Isn't that uh, <laughs> That's disaster. a tragedy. <laughs> that, yeah. So can you That's do that? Can you do that by re, you know meditation? Does that no, help reset see, the, the word, emotions? The word meditation uh, doesn't really mean anything because it's too generic. It's not anybody with eyes closed. We think they're meditating because me there are many dimensions to it. Right now, how to use the thought? There are some things which are constant within us for most human beings. Breath is happening, of course. And uh, there is a thought process going on. So you can link these two, and because you asked right now what we can do, right now what you can do is uh, simply this. See, what you call as my body is an accumulation. It's a food that we have eaten which slowly gathered like this. We were not born like this. And what you call as my mind is the various impressions we have taken in from the world around us. So this is a heap of food, this is a heap of impressions. So where is you? So the simplest thing is just this, mm -hmm. that you create a little distance from what you call as my body and what you call as my mind. So you just do this, people can do this, there is also a guided meditation called Isha Kriya which is available on the app and everything. All you have to do is with inhalation, you just remind yourself, I am not the body. With exhalation, you remind yourself, I am not even the mind. I'm not the body and I'm not the mind. And so what are but you? With inhalation and exhalation. I'm not Why the do you body? ask me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so what it's am I then? Yes, yeah, exactly. See, I'm not the body, least, not the mind. See, the most important thing is, at least you know I do not know, all right? I do not know is a tremendous possibility. The moment you see I do not know, the longing to know and the possibility to know Happen, uh, naturally happens. Because see, if you just think now, you the know moment, all... The moment you see that I do not know, you ask the question, then what am I? <laughs> <laughs> but you asking me, what am I? You should not ask me, you should ask yourself, what right. is the nature of my existence? If you do not understand or know the nature of your existence, your existence is going to be accidental, isn't right. it? It is that which is causing so much anxiety. Suppose you're just about to get into an accident of some kind. Is there anxiety? I've heard you talk about fear, desire, that these are all... You're a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> that they're from no, the I'm environment. Saying, <laughs> see, if you're getting into an accident, is there naturally anxiety in anybody? Natural, isn't it? Yeah, of course, so you're right bracing now, yourself yes, for an accident. Right now, most human beings are existing accidentally because they do not even know the nature of their own existence. So anxiety, we are beginning to think is natural. Mm. Anxiety is nat natural. As a child, when you were two, three, four years of age, joy was natural, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Exuberance was natural. Now we are beginning to say anxiety is natural. No, anxiety is not natural. You're right. This sure. is because you're existing accidentally. Mm. I'm not my body. I'm not, I'm not even not the mind. mind. Yes. Inhalation, I'm not the body. Exhalation, I'm not even the mind. This is a guided process available on the app and... Sadhguru. <laughs> nice to have you. Thank Check you. him out Wonderful. on all his social media platforms. He's got to go now because he's going to the United Nations. He's a busy man. <laughs> Very. Thank you for stopping Thank by. You. Good Thank day. You.